Awesome. Welcome everyone to Perf Bits on a Friday. This is a very exciting Friday because, you know, in the past month or so, I've been doing all this great talking about uh, our partner or friends at Abstracta that do all this magical, cool stuff for your benefit through partners like Blaze Meter and other companies that they work with. But they're some of the genius com uh, contributors behind the Apache J Meter tool and some really cool stuff. Um, I have with me today uh, Roger Abelinda. Uh, Roger, welcome to Perf Bits. You're live. Hello. And where where are you live from? I'm from Uruguay, South America, in right yes. now in Montevideo, the capital city of Uruguay. Capital, which is a big city, actually. Very, very. Yeah, big. kind of one million and a, and a half habitants. You know, that's perfectly good. And they have amazing internet because look at this picture. You have this marvelous picture. <laughs> I'm, I'm jumping through a bunch of equipment and it looks kind of grainy, but um, that doesn't matter because we're going to be doing this really, really awesome demo of, uh, you notice the title? Did you, did you like the title of our session here? Yeah. <laughs> J-meter scripts written in Java. What? <laughs> Mind blown. Uh, I want to share this with people uh, so bad. So, um, but first I have to do a little, um, uh, a little talk about our partners like Abstracta who do mo much more, um, than just the cool things that Roger's going to show you. Um, we have a few other partners. Um, some of them are mutual partners actually. Um, one of them is Ryan Folk and I think Fede, uh, who's your COO of Abstracta is going to make a connection with Ryan and Ryan's got some uh, fantastic expertise, uh, in other realms like the Dynatrace realm, um, and the consulting uh, teams that he's working with. He's moving and shaking. So uh, Ryan Folk and Folk Consulting is a supporter of Perf Bytes. Um, and then we have friends. Now, um, Roger, also, if we think about JMeter and doing what we're going to show today with the DSL, it could benefit you if you're doing JMeter behind Flood.io because you use JMeter scripts to actually put them up to Flood. Um, or you could do them to, to Blaze Meter. Um, but uh, we have our other sponsors, Tricentis, uh, which is Neotis and Flood.io. We have uh, Scott Moore Consulting, who I think I still owe him something, something I'm supposed to write for him. So a shout out to Scott Moore and Scott Moore. And the SMC Journal, if you, a couple times a week, you get a video news update with some topics from Scott. It's really, really, really nice. Um, uh, so yeah, what's this? It? Abstracta, Ryan Falk, Tricentis, Neotis, Flood.io. And Scott Moore Consulting. I can't, I'm probably forgetting somebody, but I don't really care today. It's Friday. How was your week? Roger, what did you do this week? I've been working on DCL, releasing some stuff, <laughs> and doing CTO yeah? stuff on the, on, overall. What's G CTO stuff? I'm just doing CTO stuff. <laughs> yeah, like uh, talking with many people, arranging uh, schedules, uh, reviewing some R&D, uh, uh, initiatives that we have yeah. here in Astracta. Yeah, those kind cool. of stuff. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, just to, so you know, you'll see there's, uh, I can see, I don't know if you can see, there's actually some, some shout outs out here. I can actually show uh, a hi, Mark comes from Antonio. That's very, very good. Hi, how are you? Uh, you can actually uh, put the things on there. I'll hide the different stuff. Look at that. Um, yeah, so you can chat us stuff if you have some questions while we're going, and we're going to save this. But I want to dive right in with this. I can code scripts directly in Java. Like, I don't have to punish myself trying to manually edit the XML of a Java file. And all there are multiple people in our history that have companies that have tried to solve this problem because nobody likes, like, I'm going to edit a bash script inside the XML of a file that's not really XML, and then all the formatting is wrong for a bean shell script or a groovy coding, it just doesn't work. And it's frustrating, especially if you're trying to shift your stuff left on the pipeline and you're collaborating with developers who like code. This is kind of wild. This is an amazing innovation. I've, I've seen just a little bit of it, Roger. So I'm, I'm gonna be kind of your audience as well. Um, and if you're, if you're ready, uh, with something you want to give us just a little overview to kind of kick off what you guys have built yeah sure sure uh, so yeah um, so the DTL like it was born because I, I, I mainly come from a development uh, environment I mean I, I've always most of my career has been in the development area I started as a developer architect team leader and the like and yeah. all the applications I've been developing 
or most of the applications that I have developed are uh, were uh, under heavy load and require a lot of performance testing. So I had early contacts with performance testing and in particular with JMeter. I always, yeah. for me, it was painful to have to open the GUI of JMeter and also the XML, having it in the CSV. So this was always for me like a, a missing piece or, or a gap that needed to be filled. Uh, there are some other tools like Gatling um, K6, that is kind of a new, a new thing for me, yeah. <laughs> but that are code based, but it, it requires you to move out from the Java environment and Java world. And so it also has this kind of context switch that is not nice when you are in the flow programming and developing and you want to yeah. write there and uh, start doing some performance testing. So that's why the Shameter Shava DCL was, was born and that's the main reason for implementing it. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you have any comments or should we move on to show how, how this works um, starting a new project? Yeah, I, I, I mean, right off the top, I, there could, if people have questions, they can pop them in the chat. I mean, the two that, that come to me right in mind is how sophisticated of a Java programmer do I need to be to use this? Like, could I just be a beginner in Java and, yeah, you know? Totally. Yeah, totally. I mean, in fact, you don't need to, to have any programming knowledge to implement a test plan in, uh, with the DCL. Uh, it's kind yeah. of the IDE is, will help you and will guide you through the implementation of the test plan. The test plan oh. is the, the basic concept of Shameter. You don't have to yeah. know anything about functions, force, if that, which are the basics of programming in general or programming in Java. You only have kind of uh, write some, some strings that are, is very basic, it's just text, and yeah. then use the dot in the IDE and it will auto show you what are the available things. We are going to do a demo. So you get yeah. kind of an idea of how it feels if you don't know how to program or script or you don't know Java at all. Yeah. Uh, in a way, I will tell you, Roger, when I, I did, I took, I think, a, like a boot camp course equivalent in ANSI C back when I started my career. And within a little bit of time, I was actually coding some C for like printer, printing out stuff, just like formatting, string <laughs> formatting, print statements. You know, it was very simple stuff, but it opened the door for me to then get into, hey, I know enough to use LoadRunner. Um, to do the uh, any of the C programming you needed to do for years and years in ANSI C. And, of course, you got the basics of programming, your conditionals, looping, kind of uh, any of your, like, switch or case type statements. Like, you learn the guts of the program. So, in a way, for testers who would go and grab uh, the Java training, you and I chatted. I'm, I'm a big fan of the um, Apple tools does that uh, test automation university and, and our friend Angie Jones uh, did that Java course, uh, which is a great place to start. You could do the Java course and be just happy as a clam learning this tool with you. So, so I think that's a really good, and it opens the door. Then you could learn more about Java. Like you could, then you could add, Hey, I wonder if I did this cool, like they'll start innovating stuff. Um, which is my second question to bring up. Um, right away, there may be people who are like, this sounds so cool. I'm ready to dive in. <laughs> it is out on the abstract to GitHub. I think. Is yeah. it publicly out there? Um, yep. And maybe uh, we could, I could share the link. I have like captions I can do. I can do a lower third. I mean, there's something here. Like I can chat something. Uh, I'm going to add what, yeah, chat me the, chat me the URL and I'll, I'll post it for people as you yeah. get set up. Cause we're going to do some hands-on demo of this thing and to share it with people, right? Yep. Here you have like kind of the user guide and let me show, share with you the actual repository. Yeah. So I'm going to go right like that to add and I'm going to show that so people can get to it. Um, GitHub.io, of course, abstracta.github.io and it's JMeter Java DSL. Um, DSL obviously is like a descriptive scripting language or... Yeah, domain language. specific language. Domain specific language, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I always mess that up in my head as well. Yeah. So yeah, uh, if people want to jump in right away and even see what you're sharing on the screen and kind of things, and you could see how it's done. Um, and then I'm sure we'll get some other questions in the chat as we go on. Um, 
Andres, uh, Andres here. That's kind of cool. Leandro, our friend, amigo Leandro, uh, joined for just a second. He's, he's giving you a shout out uh, as well. Um, so I can, uh, let's see, there we go. Leandro, hola, Roger. That would be really, really cool. All right, awesome. All right, uh, let's share your desktop. And okay. you and I are down in the corner. So I'm going to hide myself. Um, and let's see if I can do it like this. Okay. Uh, yeah, so go ahead. You, you keep going and uh, give us a little tour of how this works. Okay, great. Yeah, this is the user guide. It's kind of the main entry point. It provides you insights or introduction to the DCL, how to do different stuff. And it introduces you also to Shameter. If you don't already know Shameter, you also have a kind of a, a gentle introduction to Shameter through the usage of the DCL. Um, so let's start by creating a project. In general, uh, what we try to encourage people or, or in general to do is not to start a new project for performance testing, but to include the performance test right into the project where you are developing the, the actual application. That way you get automatic uh, CICD inclusion in the test. And since we are using ShayUnit, which is a pretty common um, alternative for running unit tests or tests in general. Uh, it will run with any continuous integration server. It will use uh, the existing reporting on ShayUnit. So uh, that's it. For this demo, I will create a new project, which is not the usual way we encourage you to use it. But in any case, uh, it's, it's a good way to, to demo the, the features. Uh, this demo, you can also start playing around by downloading this other repository uh, that is a DCL sample. It's just a sample, a simple sample project that only contains an example performance test using the DCL. But I will show you how easy or how you can start uh, creating a project right from the from the ground. I will start with my IDE for non-programmers. An IDE is just a text editor, which is more kind of intelligent or allows you to do more, more things. In this case, I will use IntelliJ IDEA. And we start a new project. I will say perf bytes demo. And I will just create it. And now we have a project. This is a Maven project. Maven project is kind of a tool that allows you to build applications in Java. Uh, so now I will start adding dependencies to the project. The dependencies are libraries or other artifacts that you are going to use in, in your project. And in particular, I will go into use Shameter Java DCL. Okay. And the version C.0.60 is the last, latest one. Uh, I have to, let's do this to update it. I will also use it in test, not in production code. And that's basically for, for setup. Let's create a test now. Uh, so I will create a class, performance test. You don't know, you don't need to know what a class is, but actually it's how Java structures different pieces of code. In this particular, I will put the test. Uh, let's start with a simple test. I'm missing some dependencies right now. I will also use uh, JUnit, Jupyter, Engine. Okay. Yeah, that version is nice. You see that the IDE autom automatically completes everything from for me. Uh, we use uh, a cert J, yeah, core, yeah, okay. And I think that's it for dependencies. The this is just the DCL, and this is for running J unit or test in general. And this is an assertion library that I usually use. That is pretty pretty cool to use. Okay, so we have the test here. Let me create test. Okay, so now let's rename this test. And right now what we have to do is create a test plan. This is a general concept of Shameter where you script what the performance test is going to do. For that, I will start with test plan. And you see that it's red, so it's failing, but I can do something that is Alt-Enter in the IDE, 
and will automatically include the import or the dependency that I, that I need to use the DCL. You see that here you, we are using the DCL. So right now I will put an asterisk so I don't have to put any other imports. And let's start with a simple test plan that has a thread group. You see that we have auto completion here, which is one of the cool features of using a uh, call for creating the test plan. And you can see that it's pretty simple or pretty uh, uh, quick to create a test plan with this. In fact, uh, I will use this uh, thread group, the one that has threads, iterations, and children. OK, one thread, one iteration. And then let's add some children. For example, I want an HTTP, yeah, a sampler. OK, and the URL, HTTPS. Uh, open cart abstracta.us. That's the service that I want to hit. Just with this, we have a test plan. To run it, we can do run, and you have it. Uh, this will run one thread. A thread is kind of the, the mechanism or the concept that Shimiter has to specify how many parallel requests you want at the same time. So we are going to use just one for the time being. And this, is, this tells Shimiter how many times each thread or each virtual user uh, will execute this logic in the test plan. So we are going to just use one thread one, one time. And this, if we do this and run, we have just created a test plan that does an HTTP get to this URL. It, will, it is compiling and running. While it does that, uh, this is cool. I mean, you have a test plan, you run it, you see that I got uh, the average response time is one second. This is milliseconds, one second and a half, uh, no errors, and just one sample. But you can also do some other amazing stuff. I mean, you can, if you want to do a post instead of a get, you put post and you put, you put the body and the content type. This is one of the things that we have incorporated within the DCL is that we have incorporated also good practices about um, Shameter usage or in fact uh, usage of, of any performance tools. When you do a post, you usually have to specify the content type. In Shameter, for doing this, you have to create a header and you might miss creating that header with the content type, the proper content type. So right now, like the DCL is telling you, OK, you have to specify a body, but you also have to specify a content type. It's like a required ma mandatory stuff. So we are enforcing also best practices by using the D DSL. So let's keep it this way. Let me add some, something to kind of allow you vis visualize the requests and responses. Let's add a result. Oh, I missed a comma. That is programming. <laughs> Resource tree visualizer. And if we add this, we can run. And this will provide me with a usual component in meter that is the view resource tree visualizer uh, that shows you all the requests and responses. You, you get it here. And whenever it runs, it should I can stop the test plan if I want. But whenever you run, you can see here the actual request that was made, the response that was made, the headers, and the like. So you get so all the information there. Yeah. I'm going to jump in, uh, Roger, on that one thing. It's a little surprising for folks to imagine that they're seeing the actual view results tree that you normally see in the GUI, but it's popping up in your IDE. And this, of course, is just because the Apache JMeter jar, you just you just use that same rendering engine to do that? Yeah, yeah. In fact, we are using JMeter underneath to run everything. So in fact, yeah. here we are telling, uh, we are uh, creating or asking JMeter for the UI for representing the view resource tree. And we are popping a, a, a frame, a, a window, where we show yeah. that, that component. Yeah. The thing that I think people will find interesting um, is there are some people who use JMeter for almost I would say almost very scientific types of tests that they do because one, it can be a fairly precise tool, um, the way the measurements, the way the sampler object works. And some people have concerns if they're like switching tools, like 
if I go to a new tool, then the metrics will be different and my averages will be off and my all my numbers I have to adapt and reset. Exp- There's a whole lot to, if I stay with the same tool, the sampling mathematics and the and the biases within that sampling, I don't change that. The nice thing here is you have an easier way to script, but the engine is exactly the same. So your measurements yeah. would stay very, very similar, right? Yeah, in fact, uh, let me show you something. But if you do, instead of run, let's do a show in GUI and we run this, you will start a shade meter GUI, a full flesh shade meter GUI right into 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 this test and it will in fact start faster than Shemeter usually does because we <laughs> already have the, some classes cache so you see that everything that we have created is here yeah uh, everything that the DCL creates is here so Shemeter users can easily review the test plan and see if the what they have written in code is exactly what they expected in, in the in the Shemeter GUI yeah, which is great for, for new adopters because I know how this should look in the GUI and they may want to just, bef- I don't want to run it, just pop it up so I can do a comparison and learn and also trust. Like I trust that this is doing the same thing that I normally do yeah. in a GUI, which is really, really cool. Yeah, um, and if you have paid attention, I I, I did I closed the window, but if you have paid attention, we also, uh, these kind of best practices, we have also in this test plan, let me uh, show it again. Uh, in the, this test plan, we also include some built-in elements that in Shemeter you usually should use when you use an HTTP sampler. For example, we include the cache manager or the cookie right. manager. You can always disable that, but you don't see them here in the test plan, but they are automatically added because we consider them as best practices and the thing that in most of the scenario you will use. Yeah, I, I can Im- um... I can imagine some, if you don't need it, they're not going to interfere with what you're running, right? They're, yeah, they're if, rather benign. And yeah, so you, as a good if practice, disable, if, yeah, if something does them. need it, then yeah, you could do that. But yeah, oh, you could, there you go. So if you really, for some reason, needed to test something like you, and of course, can you also, you could clear the cookies between each iteration. That's another option, right? So you could. You yeah, could by that. default, it will clear itera- uh, the, the cookies by iteration. It's kind of the default yeah. setting. Yeah. Um, this is wild. So do you have an example of one that's uh, like, this is a getting started hello world version. Do you have any that you've done already that are really elaborate scripts? Uh, I can show you some example that <laughs> I didn't expect this, but I can show you some example of a conversion with the JMX to DCL tool. That is quite yeah, important. let's talk, let's from, talk about that because uh, again, we're, if we, if we invite people to check this out, you can, you can take your existing JMeter in XML format or a JMX file and convert it. Do you want to do a conversion? Do you have one that you can? I could send you one of mine, but it's probably got all yeah, sorts yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, I have one that, uh, in fact, the October team has, has provided, and it's quite quite extensive. I don't know, maybe it's too extensive, but uh, yeah, I can, I can try with no. that. If, let's, if, we're live. We should try it. And just let's yeah, break something. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> that would be great. So, we have a few of while you're while you're searching for something. I ha- there are a few people. My colleague Justin is here. He's totally thumbs up. It's it's pretty cool to see here. I'll just I can think I can share. Pretty cool to see. I know some people would love this. Great idea to use the JMeter jar under the covers. I think that's some really good feedback. That that's a plus. And then our friend uh, Leo's here. So uh, Leo Dan, nice to see you again on a Friday. Always joining us, which is really cool. Awesome. All right, so I was just wondering what a more elaborate script looks like, but the importing, the converting is yeah. that's that's really that should be really cool. Yeah, before going to that, I want to show something else. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, oh, right now is yeah. Let me download sources. Okay. So something else that you 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 get is documentation, right? Built-in documentation in the in the IDE or in the tool. In Shemeter, you usually have to go to the GUI and the GUI only has kind of a label and then you have to go to the documentation or some yeah. course. So this is kind of messy. So here in, in, in the DCL, you can write, try, I mean, if I put post, for example, and I do, oh, sorry. I have first to write something here. Oh yeah, you, here. Have, you have to put something in there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And if we do here, 
control G. You see, send specific data in it. Some probably should send the HTTP post. The volume to include HTTP post, content type. Yeah. We also, in some cases, this is not the case, but in some scenarios, we put some best practices or when you should use this component over older, or if you should use another in most of the scenarios instead of this one. So this yeah. is an, another kind of feature of using the IDE. I want that to show cool. you also, before going to the converter, how yeah. this test uh, compares to the actual JMX. So let's yeah. do something. OK. Let's do save as a test. This is another method. You can get the test plan and save it as JMX, and then open yep. it with JMeter and do whatever you want. So yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Uh, one okay. one quick question on the documentation. Are you guys loading it live from the website? What do you mean? The the notes that you do when you right click to get the documentation in the IDE is that pulling it from uh, the GitHub or if, is that or is that pulling it from the Apache website? Yeah, this is part of of the shar. I mean, it's Java Java doc is kind of a feature of the language oh, that allows you yeah, to yeah, put documentation yeah. right into the code. Yep, got it. And we write it like because again we some things in the documentation the the Shemit documentation is is fine, but some many of the things that we want to to provide you are related to the DCL or how how to use yeah. the DCL. So we kind of combine the two, like kind yeah. of an introduction to Shemeter or and kind of an introduction to the DCL and best practice of the DCL or Shemeter. So it kind of contain everything in that cool. in that sense. Yeah, so, very cool. Comparing this test plan to the actual JMeter test plan, you can see that this is an XML that if you put it, if someone make changes to this DCL, unless you are a very experienced JMeter user and you know how to interpret this, it's very difficult to, to, to track what are the changes. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, here you have four lines of code, well, yeah, five, six, sure. I don't know, five lines of code that is pretty easy to understand and pretty easy to to review. Also, yeah. something that is kind of difficult in JMeter sometimes is if you set in some sampler, in, in some request or some element, some advanced feature, they are not visible unless you iterate over all the tree in JMeter GUI and you check yeah. every potential setting. And, but in here, for example, if I use embedded resource, you get it right here. You see that you are using downloading embedded resources. In Shemita, you have to go to the sampler, then advance, and then check the actual section that has this. Yeah, enabled. you and and or crawl through the XML, which the JMX file, the XML, to find a configuration element set to true or false that may not even be named the same. Yep. Like it's the 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 XML language is different than the GUI language. I, to me, this if you're in love with JMeter, if you if you're like me and you've got you know twenty some JMeter scripts laying around that uh, you need, to, this just seems really really cool uh, yeah. for for moving stuff. Okay, great. So let's look at a conversion then. <laughs> okay, I want just to, to show something. One one other thing before going to the conversion. Yeah. Sorry, uh, one other feature that you can use, and I think that is pretty standard when you do performance testing, is to Verify and more and more more so when you are using it on a continuous integration or continuous deployment uh, fashion uh, or doing continuous uh, co sorry continuous performance testing is checking that the actual statistic of performance uh, metrics are are in expected ranges, which yeah. in JMeter you can use assertions and the like. There is a plugin for that, but it's not as easy as is in other tools. So yeah. in this case, if we want to check the statistics, we can use something like stats equals. Uh, so that this, when you do a run, it provides you the statistics. I am yep. getting statistics, and now I'm using ID autocompletion stats. OK, I have the statistic, and I want to do some assertion. I want to check that those statistics are what I expect to. So for example, yeah. assert that. Stats. Oh, stats. Overall, okay. What I want to check? Yeah, the sample oh, time percentile yeah. ninety-nine. Yeah, that's pretty standard. Uh, I'm missing missing some imports. Assert yep. that. Yeah. Mm. 
Betsy, ah, I miss an a T. <laughs> Import static, yeah, let's use this one. And is less than, for example, duration, I don't know, uh, of millis, five. Yep. I'm going to make it fail. <laughs> because sure, the sure. response time is less than that, is, is higher than that. But you can it's see higher that than five it's, milliseconds, yeah. yeah, it's pretty standard and you have all the metrics that, uh, you usually get with Shemita like sample times, error, errors, etc. that you can check whenever the test plan ends. Yeah. So here, okay, I will close this and then you have it. The expected, in fact, you got one, four, six, uh, it is not less than five seconds. So this is okay. also a nice feature that you get and you usually should do assertions on the statistics that run the test plan. Right. Okay. And then if this gets, uh, you could save this as a Java executable. So when you're, if you were to yep. put it on the CI pipeline, it's, it's not, you're not having to make a call into JMeter and then loading a JMX and all this kind of stuff. This is its own. So you could do all sorts of other Java programming here, which yep. could be like if you saved your stats off to a repository and then you just compared to our yesterday's run or two days ago or a trend. You could do some other things with a database. Like you could, you can incorporate this into a, a larger Java, small Java utility to wrap this stuff. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, something interesting uh, regarding that that you mentioned is that if you want to save all like the statistics, the CSV of the, yeah. of the execution, you can use JTL writer and I can do, I don't know, maybe put the date on the file and like that, and there you get all the statistics that Shemeter collects in a file. Uh, yep. That is pretty pretty standard as well. Also, you can use uh, this is kind of a built-in of the uh, tool that is not actually a listener on Shemeter. It's kind of a separate uh, operation. Oh, yeah. But here, I, have a lot of people HTML. do this after after a test run, and we fire it up, and then like process the JTL and spit out a web report. Yeah, here yep. you can just specify the directory and it will generate the HTML report for that. You can also use Grafana and the like with the influxdb listener, which will dump all the statistics to influxdb and then you can yep. uh, report them in Grafana. There are several options for, for kind of doing performance testing and getting all the statistics yeah. and then later on reviewing them. Yeah, looking, looking at the trend. Very, yep. this is so cool. It's like something that you can also use. This is more mostly for for local testing, but I will I will show you. Uh, yeah. If you want to show statistics live, we have included a different model that is dashboard. You get it here. Let's refresh it. And yep. Then I will put dashboard. I have to do an import. But Ah, let me let me get it he, from here. That I have the actual. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is it? Mm. Uh, I, we've had a few chats uh, coming in. If anyone has any other questions or you're getting sparked in your mind like I am, feel free to put them in the chat. You have it there. The dashboard visualizer. I just added an import uh, with okay. the dashboard visualizer, and if we do this, you get. Let's see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> Good. You're, so far, we're batting a thousand. On the and there it goes pops up. So you get live uh, charts on the statistics. Right now, it's not very useful. Let's do some more iteration. Cause, yeah, because we're not we're not really. Why don't you change yeah. our just like a small ten threads for something? Yeah. Yeah, ten That'd threads. Cool. One hundred iterations each. Yeah, we we don't want to overload the one card. No, it's not a problem. It's just a playground tool. I mean, <laughs> so you, no, go ahead. Feel free to blow it up. That'd be fine. And again, <laughs> we're reusing some of the visualization listeners. Yeah. Um, and you might again, you might for your regular load testing, you might never turn this on for under load like you would normally with the JMeter engine. The visualizers, it's still running in that space, right? So it's, you, yep. you don't you want to keep your load generator healthy and efficient. So you may only run this while you're kind of just manually running something. Yeah. Yeah. Another way to, to visualize live reporting is using that influx DB and Grafana option that I mentioned to you because it's sending the, the statistics 
light to InfluxDB, and you can see the, the dashboard live in, in Grafana. But this yeah. is kind of simpler because you don't need uh, an infrastructure for that, this kind of, this this window. Yeah, especially if you're like, I'm, I'm working on a script, developing a script, and kind of building up a scenario, I want to actually do it, get a little better visualization. If I were in the JMeter GUI, I'd be adding all these visualizers, and I'd have to jump around like five different uh, uh, listeners. Here, I can get it in one table, and if I have two monitors, I can put one over on the other monitor, yeah. right? All right, okay. cool. Roger, this so is let's so... Let's now you, do the, the, the kind of heavy conversion and see what we get. <laughs> yeah, let's see what we get. I, I, I'm curious, just because, honestly, I think um, for, for JMeter users who are not Java gurus, you, can, you don't have to be a Java guru. Um, you do have to learn how to do some of the IDE, but the IDE really helps you. Um, but it's also, how, do, how would somebody, hey, I have a JMeter script, I want to convert it. What is it going to look like? And and this is so cool that you guys de developed a converter as well. Awesome. Hey, okay, I'm doing some. Uh, okay, so now we have a test plan that is pretty heavy. Not everything yeah. will be converted because we are still working on the conversion. But you can see that most of it, it, it will. And in fact, we are going to release a, a release on, on Monday that will improve a lot this particular conversion. And cool. Let me do this. OK. I will show you first how the test plan looks in JMeter. And you can see that it's pretty complex. <laughs> yeah, no. It's, yeah, one, and once you get logged in, you can go do all these other ad It's like an e-commerce, uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, you have cool. here an if controller. There is a for each controller around here. Here. Yep. So yeah. Uh, so let's try converting this. So we provide a char also in the releases. If you go to the release uh, to the latest release, you will see a char that is named JMX to the to the CL. Uh, JMX. Got it. I have already downloaded the latest version that is not the developer development version. The development version works better. Uh, maybe I could use <laughs> the development version. Now let's try with, with the release version better. <laughs> okay, so char minus char and JMX to the TSL, and then we provide the the JMX that we want to convert via JMX. And we do that this. Dun, dun, dun. Here I'm gonna I'm gonna share the. We get this as an output, and if we copy everything, all of this, chan chan, we copy, and we replace here our test plan. We get the entire test plan. I have to do some imports. Sure. Me... This is live. <laughs> Demo. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's it's still an. It, it, you think about any time if anyone has ever had to switch test tools with any transport level protocol level work. This this is a. Uh, it's an enormous pain, and I've tried to build parsers myself, switching between tools, and there's always manual cleanup. Something doesn't come over, but the fact that you're easily within the 95, 98 percent of it is. You know, with just a few tweaks for some imports, boy, that's that's tremendous. Very and cool, just, man. Yeah, you see, for example, this element that is a regex extractor in the version that is going to be released on on Monday is going to yeah. be just one liner. So right. the, we are still working on improving the conversion. Uh, these test element things are appear when the conversion when there is no uh, custom conversion for it. But yep. on Monday, we are going to release custom conversion for if controllers, for each controllers, regex extractor, cool. uniform random timer. And we yep. keep adding them. So keep tuned because we keep improving things. What we encourage yeah. the, com the community in general is whenever they see something in the DCL that can be improved, it can be in the DCL itself in the API, or it can be yeah. in, the, in the conversion. Please let yeah. us know. Create an issue on the GitHub repository. If you can contribute something, just reporting an issue is enough for us as a contribution. And yeah. even though Abstracta took the initiative to start implementing this, this tool, 
it's not something that we want to kind of do alone. We want everyone to collaborate or as much people as to collaborate as possible because we want this yeah. to be a successful project. We don't want to own the DCL. We want just to, to make it evolve and be a better tool for doing a continuous performance testing. Yeah, and, and, and make it more adaptable to live on a pipeline, be, and, and to me, the biggest help uh, is being able to collaborate with your development team who maybe don't, who, are, who aren't like you, I have to learn some Java, I have to learn some JavaScript, I have to learn some Groovy, and you don't have to be the Java guru in order to get this going, but at least it makes it easier to collaborate because you have common language skills uh, to collaborate, and that's, that's a huge win. Cool. So All right. He, here you see a fully functional. This is a fully functional test plan that we have converted from JMX. As I already yeah. mentioned, this test plan is not yet optimized. I mean, it's not using all the DCL custom uh, functions. But yep. you can see that some are, for example, the thread group. The most used ones are the thread group has already a conversion that you see that's pretty uh, short. Yep. The transaction has a conversion, the sampler, the headers. We plan yep. in the future also to optimize these headers that are not optimizing the JMX as to reduce yeah. at, at the minimum the code that we generate. But it's kind yeah, yeah. of a future thing. But you can see that most of it is being converted. The encoding, follow redirects, uh, think timer. That in the fact, this, this part has not been fully converted, but it will. But in any case, this is a fully functional test plan. So you can run it and do whatever, all the magic that you can do with with the test, I mean, I can do a run. Yep. Oh, I missed that dot. Yep. <laughs> and I can get the statistic and do a search on live reporting. I can add even elements here or remove them. It's easier yep. to, to, to edit. You can yeah. even use the IDE to extract common features. For example, I don't know. Let's say that we have here the content type. This is kind of more advanced programming, but I can do extraction which is here is just a conversion and I replace all the occurrences with, okay, a set value. And well, I, I am not, I just mean, no, yeah, yeah. no, I should, we'll just follow the Java convention for variables. <laughs> yep, you see yep. that automatically this was replaced in every request. So this is, this is not DCL feature, it's, this is IDE feature, but just having hit this, yeah. you can replace every occurrence of a set value. For example, I want to change this for, I don't know, a 10 or something, and you get that for free with yep. the IDE. Even the URL, I don't know, if I want to get this part and create a variable for that and say, okay, yeah, yeah all the occurrences. Base and, and I think URL. I think part of that is also correlating from response payloads, which you would still have to do some more debugging to use response extractors, uh, XPath, um, JSON, whatever extractors you want. You actually have to run it to see the payload come back, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, regarding extractors, I can show you, for example, that example that I said about okay. regex extractor. If you want to create a regex extractor, it's just as simple as regex extractor. Then we put the uh, let me yeah, see, yeah. variable name, you. and then the regex. The variable re name is this one, okay. and then the regex is this one. And yeah, I think that well, I have to put a uh, default value. Yeah. Uh, of not found. Not found. And yeah. This is exactly the same as this. This is what you will get uh, from the release that is going to be released on Monday. This I mean, is what yeah, you yeah. are actually getting right now. Yeah, it, it, and it makes it more, it makes it easier to not just see test element property over and over yep. again. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Roger, this is this is uh, some incredible innovation. I, we're uh, coming up on about forty-five minutes. If anyone still has questions, they can post them here. I have a couple things for you. Um, um, and we are going to come, I think we're going to do another, we have some other things you and I want to talk about. So we're going to come back in another session maybe and post that. Mm -hmm. um, so let me, let me do this and get us back side by side. Thank you. That's amazing. And I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, yeah. I'm going to leave that down below mm -hmm. just so people can check it out. Two questions I have for you. It, this is available in any IDE. So you don't have a specific, is there any, 
any tailor, if somebody's in the JetBrains or they, you can do Java and VS Code. You, I mean, is there's no dependency because this is very nope. generic Java kind yep. of programming, right? Yeah, it's just a, a Shara dependency that you can use in any ID. Yeah. Um, and all the IDs have kind of the same features like inline documentation, debugging. You can also use Java debugging not only to, to debug the test plan, but also the shame meter call. I mean, if you go into, yeah. into, 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 you will get into the shame meter call and you can actually uh, understand what shame meter is actually doing to send the packet or to receive the packet. Yeah. Right, because because you're in the engine directly with a Java runtime yeah. with the JRE running in debug mode, instead of fire it up separately and run, and then you you're still on the outside of the, that container. Yeah. Um, with the conversion, um, some people might be thinking, and I want to get your opinion on this. Um, I like to work in the GUI. I save a JMX, then they convert it to the developers, and they work in Java. And then I convert it back, <laughs> save as JMX. So that's probably because there's some tweaking the imports and such. That's probably still not recommended. Like it's kind of like, hey, maybe this is a one way adoption, and then your your way forward would be to work with Java and maybe not so much in the GUI as the primary. I don't think yeah. you can go back and forth, right? Yeah, I mean, you you can do it. You can go back and forth. With the actual conversion, uh, some things on the like when you get the JMX and then you get the DSL and then you get the JMX again, the final JMX yeah. might not be exactly the same as the as the original JMX. It might have some modifications, maybe an order of elements or yeah. some property. But in general, you you could do that flow. Regarding the imports, we are yeah. it's also an improvement that we have for the for the for the tool that we plan yeah. to implement at, uh, in the near future. That is going to allow you not only to create kind of the test plan, but also the entire class or the entire project if you want. So those things are things that we have in the in the roadmap, but we haven't implemented yet. But they shouldn't be that difficult to do. So yeah, and if you if you're interested in helping on that roadmap, you can visit the. Visit yeah. this down below. And, and you can and submit pull requests and, some, and help us implement the code. I mean, there are some other yeah. users that have submitted pull requests. So that's another way to collaborate. That is more advanced. You will need some programming skills. But in any ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, there's a tremendous amount of compatibility between this running in Java and JMeter being written in Java and being JVM based. Obviously, the question is, are there other languages? One of the nice things about JMeter with especially the different, you could code in Java, Bean Shell, Groovy, you could do JavaScript, you could do all these other languages, at least because they run in an interpreter on top of the JRE uh, or on the Bean Shell layer uh, through the JRE. Probably not going to see a .NET version of this. Well, we, we, have it, we have it on the roadmap to make some experiments to see how we can adapt it to .NET. In fact, yeah, yeah. it's part of the things that we have it on roadmap. It's not something that is going to be released next month, but it's something no, that no, we no. want to explore. Uh, no, regarding it, the, it, the other good. languages it, that are based on the JVM, you can use the DCL API to and, and write the script or the, DC, the, the test plan in Kotlin, yeah. for example, if you want, because it's compatible with the, any Java API. Or you can use Groovy if you want. You can also use yeah. it. So yeah, if you don't want to implement it on Java, you can use any other. Uh, Java compatible uh, Java language. compatible interpreted language. Yeah, yep. I, I'm thinking uh, especially some of the advantages if you if you completely tried to do this in a Visual Studio .NET, uh, like if I'm in a .NET shop which I work in, um, you would miss out on this step into. You couldn't quite do the same debugging. I mean, there's a few things you'd have to really work around yeah. because you're in two totally separate process yeah. spaces to do that. Um, but there, it could still get a lot of the advantage of I'm programming JMX in code, I'm shifting left and I'm working with developers in the language of their choice and we can still get some load. We can use the same objects in the same, same ways of doing it. So who knows? Who knows? <laughs> that could be very cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome. uh, as you said, like we, we want to do some experiments. It, it was in the Romans like for some, some time now. We haven't had time to invest on it, but we plan to invest time on it. And as you said, Many of the features that are built in on the Java DCL will probably not be available on the 
on the .NET uh, version. But most yeah. of it, I think that the most of the benefits you you will get them. Yeah, yeah, very, very cool. Um, Roger, uh, on behalf of the whole community of all uh, people in the JMeter world, thank you, thank you, and your teams for this effort. It's very, very cool. Um, and thank you and for to the... me, this is a real, real game changer for uh, shifting left and actual just, just even for testers who learned JMeter and didn't really learn programming. This is a, a great way to open the door. One of the things I had flashed on the screen or shared out there was the Test Automation University. Actually, I think I have it right here. Uh, there it is. Um, if you want to go check it out, testautomationu.applatools. Our friends at Apple Tools, a great company. Um, and they have a Java, Java programming course from Angie Jones. So if I were in JMeter and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to go for this. I would sign up and start following Abstracta and the DSL, uh, but also go take that course from Angie, uh, and you would be you'd be well on your way to having some good fun. Um, Roger, thank you again. I'm gonna bid you adieu for now, which is French for Henrik. But uh, <laughs> adios, amigo. Muchas gracias. Before, before ending, I, I want I want to ask yeah. some some something from from the audience. Uh, Right now, the DCL, I know that there are several teams that are using it in, in production. So it's fully functional. We are trying to not break compatible compatibility. But right now, what we are focusing is on spreading the word. So there are several ways of doing this. <laughs> but yeah. one of the, the things that we kind of uh, are encouraging everyone to, to do is to start the GitHub repo. So if you give us a, a start, it will make the, the repo more popular. It will help us understand how many people is interested on the project and invest more time on it. Because if yeah. we see that no one cares about this, we are not going to, to, to invest much time on, yeah. on it. So the more stars, the more we are going to invest on it. So please, yes. if you can start there, create issues, submit pull requests, help us create this in, in collaboration. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for this time. Okay. It was awesome to, 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 to have this session. Mark. Yeah, it was great, Roger. I think we're going to come back. We maybe do a little bit more around um, visualizations with the Grafana and FluxDBE. We, we do some other things about how do you use and integrate. Um, you can bring other APIs. So if you're working with a blaze meter uh, or a cloud-based load testing, again, this is its own Java app. So you can control JMeter and control other tools, other services. So I think we'll do another session and uh, drill down into that. Uh, if you're ready and congratulations on a very successful demo because <laughs> you know all tech people it's like we just yes it worked it's beautiful <laughs> um but yeah thank you again adios amigo how do you uh, como se dice en espanol uh just ha have a good weekend que tengas una buena semana ah no so, perdón eh, eh, sorry que tengas un buen fin de semana okay all right That'll be good. I, 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 Leandro and I speak German a bit back and forth. So, haben Sie eine fröhliche Wochenende would be <laughs> very German. Exactly. Um, thank you, everybody. We'll see you next week uh, for some kind of a perf bits. We'll, Roger and I will figure out what our next thing is going to be. Um, thank you, Roger. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to tweak the things now. And here we go.